Welcome back. My name is Tanner, and if you're new here, I'm your typical CPA who strives to live a healthy and balanced lifestyle while working in public accounting. As many of you know, winter is here. And that means the 2021 busy season is here. It's this time more than any other time where there just doesn't seem to be enough hours in the day to get everything done. As a result, you constantly feel like you're behind and that's just not good for your health or your productivity. So what's the answer? To work more hours? In this video right here, I'm gonna cover what I stress the most at work and that is to work smarter and not harder. I'll also cover seven tips I have to work more effectively. Before I cover these seven tips, I first wanna quickly go over some research that attempts to quantify the relationship between hours worked and your productivity. It found that employee output falls after a 50 hour work week and then falls off a cliff after 55 hours. So much so that someone who works 70 hours essentially producing nothing more with those extra 15 hours according to the study. So instead of putting in those extra hours, you can become more effective in those hours you do work by focusing on what does matter. And you can get on that started right away by following these seven tips. Number one is trim the fat on your to-do list. So you've just been assigned a major task or project. Naturally, your mind begins to race about the million things you gotta get done before the deadline. As a result, you start creating a to-do list that is massively bulky. The problem with these out-of-control to-do lists is that they're very much overwhelming and they prevent you from being productive. Instead, keep your to-do list lean and mean by only focusing on your three to five most urgent, important, and challenging tasks for the day. Focus on completing one task at a time before moving on to your less critical tasks. When you do, you feel more productive and less anxious. As I've highlighted in a past video, Focus on completing your most critical and important tasks first thing in the morning. Number two is measure results and not time. One thing that I like about a job in public accounting, if done right, is that your performance is measured based off your results and not the time you charge. What I mean by this is that there should not be this pressure to be remained at your desk or stay online till a set time. The time-based measurement creates a factory-like culture that spells a disaster for your mental capacity. As your brain becomes drained, you're just not gonna work well so having a requirement that you stay online or keep working till 10 p.m. is not conducive to an effective working environment. When you feel forced to work beyond your capacity, you begin to hate what you're doing, which is likely one of the main causes of employee turnover. What I have found to be one of the most effective team strategies during business season is having a clear listing of tasks that each person is expected to get done by the end of the week. This allows each team member to have a set result that they need to hit every Friday. If you wrap up your listing of tasks ahead of schedule, Use that extra time to recharge, as you're not going to be expected to appear online if you've already hit your results marker. The same goes for working on the weekend, as every single Friday a clear listing of tasks for each team member is outlined for what's expected to get done. You're free to log your time anytime over the weekend, as long as you come in Monday morning haven't hit your results marker. Number three is communicate, communicate, communicate. When you're working with others on a team, it's essential that you're communicating with one another, because when you do, you're eliminating unnecessary rework and waste of time from miscommunications. You can start by enhancing your active listening skills and focus on staying on one topic when you are communicating. For example, when composing an email, keep your message short and to the point when these communications can't happen in person, as you don't want to throw too many details into these messages, as it has the likelihood of confusing the recipient. Number four is create and stick to a routine. We are creatures of habits and so are our brains. When we establish routines, we can carry out tasks faster as we're not having to think as much about them with our brains on autopilot. There are many online calendar management tools out there to help you create and stick to a routine. If you haven't already, I highly recommend you check out one of my prior videos on the importance of having a daily routine. I contribute much of the success I've had so far based upon having a strong daily routine which has allowed me to create efficiencies in my own life to make more time to go after my goals. So in that video, I covered five reasons why it's important to have a strong daily routine and what I personally do. Number five is stop multitasking. Many of us believe that we are great multitaskers. In fact, humans just aren't capable of carrying out multiple tasks at once. You might think that you're multitasking, but you're simply just shifting your attention from one task to another very quickly. When you're switching from one task to another quickly, you may think that you're paying attention to everything around you at the same time but you're really not. In fact, researchers have found that they can see the brain struggling during multitasking. So the next time you find the urge to multitask, stop, take a deep breath, and then focus on the most important task you have right then and there. Once you're done, then move on to the next task. Number six is relieve stress, as stress can cause physical, emotional, and behavioral problems. You have stress? Yes. Which can impact your health, energy, well-being, and mental alertness. 
so it's no surprise that stress can hinder your work performance. The good news is that you are capable of relieving your workplace stress. According to the American Psychological Association, the most effective activities for stress relief are exercising, reading, listening to music, praying, going outdoors, meditating, yoga, and spending time with family and friends. Another effective stress management technique is to increase your control of a situation in advance. This can be done by planning out tomorrow, the night before, and sticking to a routine. That way you know what to expect in the morning. Number seven is a good attitude. I truly believe that when many of these tips that I outline here are carried out effectively, both you and other members of your team have a positive attitude. When people have a positive attitude, they are more likely to show more initiative. They will be more willing to help a colleague in need, pick up the extra work when someone is out sick, and carry out their work to the highest standard. Furthermore, having a good attitude at work helps you set standards for your work, ensures you're taking responsibility for yourself, and makes decisions easier because they're based off your intuition. If you're just starting your business season right now, which of these tips do you plan on start carrying out now? Or which of these tips do you think you already carry out well? Share your thoughts in the comments below. To end here, if you found this video helpful, please consider sharing and hit that like button. Also, if you want to ensure you catch my next video, be sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell. Otherwise, thank you all for watching. Best of luck to each of you this busy season, and I'll see you in the next video.